Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today I have a super fun and quick project to show you. I actually saw this on a friend's uh, timeline and she has them in, in her pop-up store where she lives. She's hours away from me, so we're not in competition with each other. She's about three or four hours away from me. So I thought I'd show you how to do these. Now these, I've called these helping hands. I don't actually know what they are called, but. I'm calling them helping hands because these are to help our hands hold a deck of cards properly. So I um, actually thought about this for my mother-in-law because she's got arthritic fingers and it gets a little bit difficult to hold the cards when we're playing cards. And uh, I just thought it would be a fantastic product for her. And I sell quite a lot of these um, to ladies that are buying them for their grandkids because they play you know and skip bow and you've got to pick up a thousand cards and little kids can't hold all their cards so these are fantastic for holding your cards whether you've got arthritic hands or little hands so stick around and I'm going to show you how I actually make these um, it's a hand sewn product super quick super easy it's done with rescued or recycled products so what I'm using here, I've got a bunch of buttons. You can use any button you like. I prefer buttons with two holes than four. You don't have to have the same button back and front. So these discs have a button on the front and on the back and that's what holds them together. Um, so you need buttons, you need some thread to match your fabric and thread to match your buttons some thread snips. I like to use a thread conditioner so I'm using wax today but you can use uh, soap, you can use a really nice silicon type thread conditioner or the wax or nothing at all but it just helps the thread glide through the fabric better. Then I've got some, this is some nice retro fabric, uh, this is actually a vintage fabric so it's probably about 30 years old. Then I'm using an assortment of different waddings or battings this one here I think was an old um, dressing gown, quilted dressing gown that's been cut up. So you can use uh, a towel, a tea towel, um, some pallen or parlan, any kind of wadding just for the padding on the inside of your discs. Hang around and I'm going to show you how to make these and how I actually price these to sell. Find something that's at least an inch larger than the diameter of your CD. I'm using, I've just got a bowl here that I've got for sale for $4 and I figure it's perfect. So it's um, it's about an inch larger than the diameter of my the circle of my CD and that's what I'm using. So all we're going to do is place the bowl on top of the fabric, trace it around and then we'll cut it out. For each one of these CDs we need to have two. Uh, we need two CDs and we'll need to have two pieces of main fabric and two pieces of a wadding. This is a hand sewn project so there's no need for the machine today. Let's see how many we can make and then we'll talk about costing. Now I've chosen some fabric to make these card holders in and what I've done I'm going to make I need two pieces for each so there's two layers there. Two four and six. I'm going to do three out of the green, three out of the red um, and the same for this blue and this um, multicoloured one. So I've just folded the fabric in three so that I can actually trace my bowl out all at once. So place your bowl over the top. Remember you want your bowl to be about an inch at least larger than the size, size of your CD or DVD. I'm just using a pen to trace around. And I'll do another one. So we're going to do, um, what am I getting? One, two, three, that's six. This one will give me another three or six. Pop some pins in just to keep it all together while we're cutting it because I am just going to cut through all of these layers. Uh, 
Okay, so I'll just take the scissors and we'll cut that out. Okay, so there we go. The circles don't have to be perfect, but as long as they're round and at least a bit about an inch bigger than your CDs, you'll be fine. What I've got here is two pieces of fabric, one's for one side of the disc and then I've got one for the other side. Now we only need, if you're doing these to sell, you only need to have a label for one side. So I've got my two pieces of fabric, a couple of CDs or DVDs, and I've got a couple of pieces of fabric for my um, wadding or batting for the centre. So let's get started. So I'm taking my batting and my fabric and I'll put the two layers together. Just sit that over the top. I have the print, if I have a printed piece of uh, wadding, I'm going to have that away from my fabric just in case I have something that comes through. The fabric might be too sheer and the print will actually show through the other side. So we have our fabric and our wadding and what we need is some good strong polyester thread. So I'm using a Goodman thread here and we need a nice long length of thread that'll give me a couple of um, goes around to do a couple of CDs. Have a needle and thread that up. Now, I'm going to show you how I uh, knot my thread. So I've got the two end pieces just there. Can you actually see that? And I've got the thread on my needle and I've just pulled that taut. Taking my needle, I'm just going to put the two threads together here and hold on to it. I'm holding on to the bottom of my needle here. I'm just going to take, pinch the thread between my fingers here and hold on to the needle. And then what I'm doing is I'm wrapping the thread around the needle twice. And then I'm just using my thumbnail and holding that secure over my needle. And then I'm going to pull the needle and just loop my finger through there so I don't tangle my thread. Just pull your thread and keep on pulling that until it comes to the end. And there's my knotted thread. So that's how I do it. I know others uh, have a technique where they ball the thread in their fingers. I haven't quite worked that out. So this is my tried and true method. The other thing I like to use is some kind of a thread conditioner. So we all know when we're sewing by hand, um, the more you do it, the more twisted your thread becomes and it, it just twists together and it makes it really difficult to try and draw your thread through your fabric. I have a, some wax here. Now you can use wax, you can use a nice silicon thread conditioner um, or you can even use soap if you don't have anything uh, at hand. So I'm just drawing that through the, the wax and I'll do that again. And what that does is just conditions my thread enough so that as I keep drawing it through my fabric, it's not actually going to twist as much as it normally would. Let's get started. So we've got our thread knotted, our fabric sitting on top of our batting, and we just want to go in and out with a stabbing motion and load up our needle. So just in there and come up probably about a quarter of an inch away, down and up and down <laughs> and up. So you get the drift. So load up your needle and just make sure it doesn't get tangled. Pull your thread through until that knot comes to the end there. And then we can just go all the way around. So it's just up and down or down and up loading up your needle. You don't have to do one thread at a time. You just load up your needle until you can't do any more. And keep on stitching all the way around. So we're going to do this until we come all the way around back to the, just beyond the beginning. So this is where my knot is. I, when I finish, I'm going to come up just beyond the knot, but I don't want to stitch where I just started. So I'll continue all the way around. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I'm just coming back to the beginning again. So my knot is just in there. So just come down and up next to it or just beyond it. And that's all we need to do. Now what we can do is flip this around the other way, grab our CD or DVD, and hopefully there's not too much glare for you. Let's have, what have we got? Aftermarket tractor parts. And place a CD over the top of your padded fabric, grab the needle, and this is the reason why you need to have polyester thread. If you're using cotton, when you pull, you're most likely going to break the thread. And it's also why we need two strands of thread. So pull the thread and just keep on pulling it. And you can see how this comes in nicely. Keep pulling. Don't jerk too much because otherwise we might snap the thread. And just manipulate the fabric so that it's centered nice and evenly around the CD. And when you've got it the way you like, hold this nice and taut. And what we want to do here is secure the stitches. So just come in here where you've ended. And we'll do a couple of stitches just to tie it off. where our loop is. We'll go through the loop once and then we'll go through that loop again the same way and this will actually tie it off. So just give it a pull and that's tied off nice and tightly. I do like to, just for security, added security, uh, I do like to actually do this a few times. So go through once, then I'll go through it again, and that's not going anywhere. Now I can do the other one as well. So there's one CD covered, ready to be put together with the other one, and then we'll pop a button over here. I have my thread again, just hold the raw ends of your thread over your needle, grab hold of it. Loop it around twice, put your, th your fingernail or thumbnail over it and draw that thread through until it creates a knot. And we can go and do the next one. Okay, I have two of these finished now and all we need to do is actually grab a couple of buttons and put this together like that and stitch the buttons together. So I have a bunch of buttons here and I'm really just using any size at all. It doesn't matter if you have um, odd sizes on the back and front and what I do like to do is use buttons that have just got two holes in them. It's much easier when you're going through all the layers and the CD here to actually just work with two holes rather than four. So um, I think I will probably just use these two buttons here. Not matching, but that doesn't matter. So what we need to do is go to the back of your CD and take your knotted thread that matches your button and I've used the thread conditioner on this as well. Just bring the needle up through the center and grab your button and pop that over the center of your disc. So just circle that over the center of your disc there. Place your other disc directly underneath and have it nice and even all the way around. And then poke the needle through all the layers. 
So the needle will come through on the other side just there and we'll grab the other button and we'll pop that on and try and line up the um, buttonholes to the same level just here. So I've got the buttonholes going horizontally just above the label. If you try and line it up so it's almost the same and centred over, over the discs, it'll be easier to line them up. So bring your thread through from the other side, hold it taut and then just come in the hole on the other side of the button and just wiggle your needle around until you can actually get your needle up through the button on this side. So the needle's just coming up through there. And just make sure your thread's not twisted as you come through. So then make sure your buttons are centered Hold it taut and come through from the front to the other side and on the other side of the eye from where you first came through. And you'll just have to wiggle it around again until you can find the needle hole, the hole for the needle. Pull it taut. So just keep holding that nice and taut because we don't want the cards to slip out later. And as you push the needle through, it actually gets easier to find the hole after a while. So you go in and out a few times. So I'll do this four or five times. Come up through the front again. Now what we're going to do is secure the button. Now we can't secure the loop underneath the button like you would in, in a normal clothing garment or whatever, however else you normally do it because we can't actually get the needle easily underneath here to draw the thread through. So what we're doing is actually pulling the thread through between the two holes here. So just push your needle in underneath here slide it across hold push your button down so it's easier to slide the button through and grab the needle just make sure it doesn't get tangled up and bring your thread through once and then we'll bring it through again being careful not to tangle it up and then hold that taut so pull that then we're going back through the other side. I probably could have centered that a little bit better. Anyway, so we'll do the same thing on this side. Push the th needle underneath the thread there. Pull the loop through and again. And on the back, I will do that twice, especially if it's messy like that is. And that's it. Just trim the thread and there we have our card holder finished. So there you go, I hope you've enjoyed this project. It was, as I said, it's a super quick project to do. It's really, really simple. All you need to do is grab some cards, slot them inside and you've got your helping hand. So how do I go about pricing these? So I've worked out that it takes me about 10 minutes to make one of these from start to finish. Now that doesn't cut, count my cutting time. I just go and grab a whole heap of scrap fabric all at once like I've done here and I'll just cut a whole batch up and then I'll put my labels on and then I'll start the process of sewing everything together. The actual sewing time is about 10 minutes per helping hand. 
so that is probably about six an hour so that's actually pretty good going I sell these at $12 each uh, the CDs or DVDs cost me absolutely nothing the buttons when we do house cleanouts we get a lot of um, vintage buttons old buttons and even just the buttons I've collected over the years so you don't have to go and use the same buttons you don't have to go and buy new stuff for this um, the fabric was a vintage fabric that I got out of a house clean out you can easily go and get fabric from an op shop or a thrift store or just use your really nice quilting fabrics because this one here is actually a quilting fabric so is this one here this is a vintage fabric that I've had and yeah this, that one's also a quilting fabric so whether you use your quilting fabrics and you purchase it or you just use whatever you've got in your stash it'll all work fine the batting that I've used as I said it's all just recycled stuff um, so there's very little or no cost as far as materials go so if I can do six an hour um, that works out six seventy two dollars for six of these in an hour so that's pretty good going and given that I only charge myself out at $40 an hour I'm actually doing pretty good especially when I'm using stuff that I haven't had to pay for it's, and the only thing I've paid for is my labels I can't stress enough how important labels are for your products even just a simple little thing like this customers come in and they see that it's handmade in the Gambia the town that I'm from and they'll purchase it just as a souvenir they'll purchase it for their kids they'll purchase it for their mothers or fathers as well for the elderly that need a little bit of support uh, just a scrap load of buttons a little bit of thread and you can sit in front of the tv in the evening with your dressing gown on have a nice cuppa with you and you just sit there and watch a movie and you can do some mindless sewing I do sell lots and lots of these I've got them on display as you walk into the shop so people see them as they come in and they just they just they love this they really really do I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy ma making these as much as I do let me know how you go with yours and whereabouts you intend to sell them catch you next time